Number 10. Save first. Saving is an integral part of your journey to financial freedom. It plays a significant role in shaping how your financial future is going to be. But it's not as easy as it sounds, and sometimes our savings efforts are thwarted by our need to spend on things that don't necessarily add value to our lives. That's why disciplining yourself to save first is the best strategy to ensure you have cash for a rainy day or retirement. Saving first means putting aside a set amount of money to deposit into your savings account before you start spending. For example, if you earn $6,000 a month and want to save 20%, put $1,200 aside before you start spending on bills and utilities. After you have set your savings aside, you can budget for the remaining $4,800. Saving first helps you calculate your budget according to the income that you have after saving. This is an excellent saving strategy because it gives you the confidence to know that you have the money set aside for an emergency which alleviates stress and makes you more productive in your day-to-day -day life. Number nine, enter a savings challenge. Savings challenges have gained popularity worldwide and are just as effective as any other saving method you use. There are many types of savings challenges, such as the 52-week savings challenge, the penny savings challenge, and the $5 challenge, among others. For example, the 52-week challenge is a savings marathon where you save $1 the first week, $2 the second week, and so on such that by the 52nd week, you save $52. But saving is not limited to small amounts. You can start with as much as $100 per week and increase $100 every week, which means that by the 52nd week, you have to part with $5,200. The concept of all other savings challenges is the same, even for the pennies, because you can start with one penny and increase a penny every day for 365 days. This type of saving allows you to save a lot of money as long as you're disciplined and consistent in your saving. You don't even have to find people you know to participate in this challenge. You can simply search for savings challenges on social media to get the idea. You save a lot of money with these challenges and you get so used to it that sometimes you don't even feel challenged. If you're a big spender, participating in such challenges can allow you to make a big purchase that is of value to you, such as buying a house or investing in income generating property. Number eight, automate your savings. Let us ask you a question. How does it feel to be living paycheck to paycheck? It's not pretty, right? Nobody likes to be broke. We all want to be able to afford a decent living. Having money stashed away reduces stress and allows you to work and live comfortably, which adds value to your life and those around you. But as much as you want to save money, you may sometimes get distracted and spend on other things. But with automatic savings, the chances of that happening are zero. Zip, zilch, nada. Jack squat. Okay, enough with the phrases, but you get the point. Automating your savings simply means having your savings automatically transferred from your checking to your savings account. For example, the $1,200 that you save from your $6,000 income, you manually deposit into your savings account, right? With savings automation, you don't have to come into contact with your savings because it's directly transferred from your checking to your savings account. And the great news is you're not in contact with your money which means you're not tempted to use it at any point in time. This ensures that as long as you have a check coming in, $1,200 is saved at the end of every month. If you automate your savings for a year, you could have $14,400 at the end of 365 days. And because you're not interacting with your savings, it helps you budget for the remaining amount to help you live comfortably and within your means. Number seven, practice a spending freeze. Did you know that you can save up to $1,000 in less than a month using this method? But it depends on how much money you spend in a month. You may be wondering, what is a spending freeze? It simply means not spending a dime on anything that isn't a necessity. For example, if you have a spending allowance that you use to buy clothes, eat out, or go to the movies, you should freeze spending on them. For example, if you eat a two-piece basket with secret recipe fries twice a week at KFC, you're spending about $15.96. In a month, it costs you close to $64. That is quite a stupendous amount wasted on junk food. Also, little amounts that you take for granted can add up pretty quickly, such as coffee at your favorite coffee shop. Freezing your spending can save you loads of cash, which you can use to do something worthwhile, such as improving your 401k, putting it towards a down payment for your house, paying off your debt, investing in interest earning projects, or simply putting it away in your savings account. Besides giving you a neat wad of cash, freezing your spending also helps you keep your house clutter free, which helps improve your living situation. Did you know that having a clean, organized home can positively influence your mental health? Number six, 
Set aside a spending allowance. Work with no play makes Jack a dull boy. Even if your name is not Jack, working nonstop and not stopping to smell the roses or enjoy the weather can harm your health mentally, physically, and psychologically. This is by no means to say that you should spend your whole income on unimportant things. It simply means that you can treat yourself every once in a while. To ensure that you spend enough on yourself, you should set aside a spending allowance. A spending allowance is money you put aside to spend on wants or things that you can live without. It is important to note that you should not set aside a spending allowance every month because it could become a habit, which can derail your savings goals. The best way to ensure that you don't go overboard with your spending is by treating yourself only when you have hit a certain goal. For example, if you had a set goal to save $1,000 a month with your spend freeze challenge and you accomplish that goal, you can splurge a little on yourself to celebrate the milestone. Setting aside a spending allowance allows you to budget for your other money without including wants or things you can do without. To succeed, you should train yourself to not tap into your money when your spending allowance is all used up. For example, if you have set $200 aside for your spending allowance and you buy a pair of shoes worth that same amount, consider your spending allowance spent. This means that you have to wait until the next time you set a spending allowance to use it. This allows you to spend the way you want to while practicing frugal living. Number five, monitor your spending. Most big spenders are reckless with their money and spend without thinking of the consequences, only to suffer later. This is because they don't stop to think about the cost of the item they're purchasing or the trail of financial woes it leaves in its wake. Monitoring your spending can be the big difference between being broke and saving the little amounts that add up to huge amounts. For example, credit card companies charge fees of between 1.3% and 3.5% of every transaction done with a credit card, depending on the payment network. This is no small amount because a payment network like MasterCard charges $2.74 in credit card processing fees. Debit cards, although cheaper than MasterCard, are also not left behind in charging fees. Also, your bank transactions, such as withdrawing money from an ATM, can cost you anywhere from $1.50 to $10, depending on the network you're using and the location of the transaction. For example, at the casino, your ATM withdrawal fee can amount to $10, which is a big price markup, considering that some ATMs don't charge a dime to withdraw money, especially if you're in the bank's network. Having a money date with your account is very important because it makes you keep a track of your spending and helps you know exactly where your money is going. This helps you curb your spending and allows you to put a lid on all the exorbitant transaction fees the bank charges for the littlest transactions. You can be in control of your money instead of vice versa. Number four, use cash. With the global pandemic, most sellers are accepting cashless payments such as credit and debit cards and other digital modes of payment. Also, counting big wads of money is cumbersome and most people feel like it takes forever to do it. When you look at the benefits of paying via cash instead of a card, you might want to rethink your payment method. Paying in cash helps keep your debt in check. As the saying goes, it's easier to get into debt, but not so easy to get out of it. Using a credit card can get you into debt, especially if you have a large limit because you spend without tracking it. While if you're spending cash, you might not have enough to overspend. For example, if you're at the mall, you might find it easy to buy several things with a credit card, which causes you to overspend. On the other hand, if you had carried $200 in cash to buy an item worth $175, you wouldn't have any extra cash to spend, which helps not to overspend. If you're easily tempted to shop for things you hadn't planned for, your safest bet is to carry cash because you end up saving more than you spend. Number three, abandon your cart. How you manage a shopping cart tells a lot about you. Most people are shopping online now more than they did before due to the rise of e-commerce and the global pandemic. The number of digital buyers currently stands at 2.14 billion worldwide. This is about 27.6% of the entire population, which means one in every four people is an online shopper. But with the rise in online purchases, impulse buying has been on the rise as well. While shopping in the comfort of your house is the most amazing thing ever, it also gobbles up your cash. If you're a big online spender, you can cut your spending by abandoning your cart when you toss items in it. For example, if you put four shirts in your cart, Abandon it for some time to clear your head and think about whether you need to buy all four shirts. Abandoning your cart allows you to make concrete and informed decisions on whether you want to make that purchase before you can check out. This helps you save money and also teaches you how to be a smart shopper. If by the end of your sabbatical, you still want to buy the items in your cart, you can go ahead and check out. 
Number two, learn to budget your money. Creating a plan on how to spend your money is one of the wisest financial decisions you can make in your life. Creating a budget allows you to know beforehand whether you will have enough money to spend on the things you need so you can prioritize your spending and focus on the more important things. Budgeting ensures that you have enough money for the things that you need and value most, which helps you keep your eyes on the prize and ensures that you don't spend money you don't have. Not planning your spending can drive you into debt. A Swedish proverb says, he who buys what he does not need steals from himself. Before we get into number one, make sure to check out the links in the description for our best recommendations to boost your savings. Number one, get an accountability partner. Some of us don't like having people in our space and like dealing with things by ourselves, but sometimes having somebody to answer to and receive constructive criticism from can shape our financial futures. Having an accountability partner can help you make sound financial decisions in your business or personal life. If you're a big spender, having an accountability partner can help you curb your spending to save your money. An accountability partner should be someone you trust, a person that gives you honest feedback, boosts your motivation, and helps you save a ton of money. Having a trusted friend as an accountability partner can help you change your perception of finances and your spending habits. You can confide in them about the fears holding you back from achieving financial freedom without the fear of being judged or ridiculed. This can help you save a lot of money and cement your relationship. Make sure to check out the next video. You're going to get a ton of value from this one. See you there.